Hello everyone, as a child one of my most favorite sweets were these gummy worms with different flavors, and today I decided to make a huge version of it. Our first taste will be unusual, carrot. We take a basin and begin to peel the carrots with a vegetable peeler. The clean and peeled carrots are sent to the basin. And so we clean out all 30 kilograms. We filled the base with a large bunch. Now we take a juicer, substitute in the juice bowl, and turn the carrot into carrot juice. The first bowl was filled, and we will accumulate juice in buckets. Therefore, we pull it from the bowl. Carrots are not very juicy, so the cake container has already overflowed. We clean it. And continue in the same spirit until we completely empty the bowl. Done. The result was 10 liters of juice. And the second flavor will be orange. Pour the fruit into the sink. Fill it up with water. And each orange needs to be thoroughly washed. In order to extract the maximum from an orange, you need also its extract. To do this, remove the thinnest top layer of zest with a vegetable peeler. It is in that aromatic essential oils are stored. We cut off the zest of about 10 oranges. And now we chop it up with a knife. We will extract the fragrance using the Soclet extractor. We send a piece of gauze to the extraction flask. And fill it to the brim with our orange peel. Another one of gauze. And we move on to the second flask. It's a refrigerator. To make it work, it needs to be filled with as cold of water as possible. The hole is sealed with tape so that it doesn't leak out. Done. The last flask remains, and we will pour two bottles of alcohol into it. After all, it is alcohol that dissolves essential oils well. Assemble a system of these three flasks. We take an electric stove and put an extractor on it and turn it on at medium power. The alcohol heats up and as soon as it reaches 78 degrees, it begins to boil and steam rises up through our system. As soon as it reaches the refrigerator, it immediately cools down. And in the form of condensation, it flows into the extractor where it dissolves the essential oils contained in the orange peel. Subsequently, alcohol with a powerful orange smell flows back into the lower flask. And so on in a circle. An hour later, the natural orange flavor is ready. And it is very rich. <sighs> back to the oranges. Citrus juicer, two buckets. A sieve goes on top and you can start. 
cut the oranges in half. The pulp is pressed against the juicer and it squeezes out the juice as efficiently as possible. We filled up our first cup. You can pour through a sieve into a bucket. And we throw out all the delayed particles so that the sieve does not clog. We pass all the oranges through the juicer. And we're left with 10 liters of juice. As a mold for the worm, we will use a corrugated pipe. Normal people use it for hoods. We stretch it to a length of about one and a half meters. Done. We also need two balloons. Inflate them so that they stretch to the maximum. The main thing is not to burst yourself with such tension. And we blow it back. We cut off the narrow neck and pull on one side of the tube. This is necessary so that the edges of the future worm are rounded. We connect the plastic clamps together and fix the ball with them so that it doesn't fly off. On the other side of the pipe, we pour some oil and turn the pipe to lubricate every fold inside. That's it, the oil can be drained. The second ball is dipped in oil. Turned right inside out. And also pulled onto the pipe. And we fix it exactly the same way. And in the middle of the pipe, we make a small incision. And we bend it a little bit so that there's a little bit of place to pour the jello. To separate the layers, insert the cardboard. And so that it doesn't pop out, fix it with a screw. We proceed to the preparation of the jelly itself. We need two large pots and pour two types of juice into them. To make the taste richer, add citric acid and sugar. And our flavoring is also added to the orange juice. All of this is thoroughly mixed. Now you need 10 kilograms of gelatin. The strength of gelatin is measured in grams. If it in stores about 150 bloom, then we have 250. In general, it's much more powerful. We fill it with a measuring cup and put it in there into the saucepan, stirring constantly. Five kilograms of gelatin should be poured into each of the juices. It immediately swells up and our juices no longer looks like liquid. We put the pots on the stove. Turn on the burners. And start mixing up our mass. After 40 minutes of continuous stirring, the gelatin is finally melted. 
We transfer the pans closer to the mold. We collect another hot mass and pour it carefully into the mold. This way we gradually fill out our form completely with fruit jelly. Then we remove the partition. And I gotta say that this was in vain because it was necessary to wait for the jelly to set a little bit. We turn on the air conditioner and let the form all night sit. The next morning, the jelly was completely frozen. Let's cut the shape lengthwise. Begin to open it. After that, we simply roll our giant jelly worm onto the table. And it turned out to be the right shape. Every fold of the pipe was imprinted. But the tastes, unfortunately, are kind of mixed. We got a carriage orange worm. But that's not all. We remembered that there are still such worms in the dusting with a richer taste. And decided to do something similar with our own. Just sprinkled it with citric acid. And sugar. Well, let's cut off a piece and try it. Hey everybody. Today we decided to cook a giant Skittle. Let's open the packet and see what it's made of. Inside, there are a bunch of small candies. If we crush them, it becomes clear that there is a candy coating around a soft, chewy inside. Now let's buy everything we need to cook a giant Skittles. First up, you'll need a lot of sugar a box of oil. We go to the produce section, then we take out quite a lot of lemons. We choose the largest and ripest watermelons and put them in the cart. We'll need a total of seven watermelons. We pull up to the checkout with two carts full. We unload them. Our check came out to $162. In addition to this, we bought another 30 kilograms of glucose syrup. To make it easier to work with, we'll pour it into a large saucepan. I ordered something special for this video. These are semicircles made out of acrylic. 
they will serve as our huge Skittles mold. We fill the mold with oil and smear it around with a brush. Let's unroll the parchment paper. We make pretty deep cuts along the edges and carefully put it inside the mold. Thanks to the oil, the parchment sticks well to the mold. That way we cover up all the inside of the semicircle. Done, it turned out great. Now we put the saucepan on the scales. We put 150 grams of glucose syrup into it. And pour 350 grams of sugar into that. Now we pour in 100 milliliters of water. We put all this on the stove and cook the syrup. Be sure to use a thermometer. We need to wait until the temperature reaches 147 degrees Celsius. Done. Now let's squeeze a little purple food dye into a teaspoon and mix it into our candy coating. The acrylic molds don't really like changes in temperature, so to heat them up, we'll turn on really hot water and fill a bath. We lower the mold into the water, and only now do we pour in the candy coating. Yes, we'll be filling the mold for a long time, so we decided to make a double portion. So we'll be doing two equal saucepans at once. Put it on the stove. We cook up the mixture and add in the food coloring. Let's send the second mold into the bath. Pour the coating along the walls. Well, we cooked and molded the coating for seven hours. At some point, it began to set crookedly. I had to gradually cover everything up. We return the molds to the studio. We've already made the outer layer for the candy. Now all we need to do is make the insides. There are many different Skittles flavors. We decided to come up with our own, watermelon. To help out with this, we have a hefty mechanical press. We transfer the watermelons to the sink and wash them thoroughly. We put the clean watermelons in a huge bowl. We install a trough under the press and put a metal barrel on top. We take a watermelon, cut off the end, and then do the same to the other side. We prep it up vertically and remove the entirety of the green peel. Now all we have is the pulp. We throw it into the barrel. Cover the top of the metal disc. Take another watermelon and clean it the same way. We send this to the barrel too, and cover it as well. In advance, we substitute a 20 liter empty cylinder at the bottom and put a funnel into it. We begin to turn the screw. We make sure that it enters the groove of the metal disc. The juice is squeezed out very evenly. It goes into the trough and drains down into the container. We twist the press with all our might. Two watermelons didn't give us enough juice. So we decided to peel three watermelons at once and cut each of them into pieces. We load them into the barrel and covering them with metal discs. Squeeze out the juice. We clean another watermelon. Squeeze the juice out of it too. Now we have almost a full container, but I want my Skittles to be sour. Let's squeeze the juice out of the lemons as well. 
First, we roll them with our hands on the table to loosen up the insides. Then, we cut and squeeze the juice using our hands. All the juice will be sent through a sieve into the container. By the time we get to the studio, the juice has separated, and the red part was at the bottom. We decided to try it, and the taste hasn't really changed at all. I mean, real watermelon juice can be transparent. We shake the container well, and the color comes back. For the inside of the candy, we need four pots. We pour 150 milliliters of watermelon juice into each of them. Then 200 grams of glucose syrup. And 300 grams of sugar into each. We put all this under the stove. Be sure to put a thermometer in one of the pots. The candy is boiling and you can't touch it at all. Just wait until it reaches 123 degrees. Open the butter. We cut it into small pieces. And one by one, send it into the pots, along with a teaspoon of white dye. Now we mix it up. The candy is ready. Just have to pour it into the molds. Oh, you have no idea how long we've been cooking all this. A day and a half. Finally, the molds are completely filled. Only a day later, the caramel completely cools down and becomes the desired soft consistency. Using a knife, we chip off the uneven edges of the candy. One half is covered with parchment. We put a board on top and turn it over. We remove the mold. Tear off the parchment. And turn over our candy half. The same should be done with the second one. Now, the most dangerous thing is to attach the two halves to each other. Then the worst thing imaginable happened. One half slipped and we heard a crunch, which really scared us. We are trying to connect the two halves. So we tear off the parchment and see the candy coating has split. We were really upset. Well, what can you do? We tried to at least save the filling. We transfer it into the mold. We'll have to redo the candy coating, but this time we'll do it differently. Again, we cover the mold with parchment. In the middle, we put a ring pasted with parchment. With the help of a hair dryer, we thoroughly warm up the mold. We cook the purple coating again, but something really scary happened here. At some point, the hot candy exploded with such a force that it knocked off the grate, splattered the ceiling, half of the studio, and got on my face. With serious burns and eye injuries, I was taken to the hospital by ambulance. If you want to see how my face looks now, then follow the link in the description to my Instagram. I should say right away, this isn't for the faint of heart. While I'm recovering, my dad will finish the skittle. He pours the purple candy down the walls of the mold. He files the uneven edges. and turns it over to empty the mold. Then he tears off the parchment and takes out the ring in the middle.
The edges of the lower half are now coated with the hot candy mixture. Now we connect the two halves very carefully and gently. Once again, we go around, connecting them at the crease. We take all the filling we managed to save. Using a knife, we cut off pieces from it. We fill our Skittle to the brim. And close it off from above. The joint is filled with the mixture. We just cut off the excess with a knife. Using a burner, we warm up our Skittle from the outside to melt small chips and sugary crumbs. On a piece of parchment, we draw the S logo. Now we melt white chocolate in a steam bath. And fill it into a regular syringe. With its help, we first draw the outline of the letter, then fill in the inside. We wait for the chocolate to harden and transfer it to the candy. That's it! Our giant Skittle is finally ready. We spent a lot of money, time, and most of all, health on this experiment. If my dad hadn't helped me, we probably would have never finished this video. Our Skittle weighs in at 78 kilograms. Let's smash it. We'll try both parts at once, the candy coating and the filling. Mmm, that's a really nice candy. Just as sweet as the original. And it has a nice watermelon aftertaste. If this video gets 250,000 likes, then we'll figure out a new way to surprise you. Subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you guys soon.